sex talk Derek and Miley Cause sexuality is tough And okay sex just isn't good enough No Sex talk With Derek and Miley Hello, folks. Welcome to Sex Talk with Erica Miley. Erica Miley here. I have a wonderful guest. I'm so excited. I'm nerding out a little bit. Well, a whole lot. Not a little bit. A whole lot. I want to introduce Ashley Manta. She is is a sex educator and creator of The Can of Sexual. Everyone find her on all the socials. I will make sure that all of that's in the show notes. I'm really excited to hear. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me, Erica. We're going to talk about cannabis. I'm so stoked about this. I I did an episode a while back about marijuana and sex. And I talked with a friend of our families and he works in like the marijuana industry. You actually are a sex educator. So this is the two worlds together. And I'm so excited. So how did you get into the field of cannabis? And how did you get to be kind of like put the worlds of sex educator and, and cannabis together? That's a great question. So I have been a sex educator for 11 years now. I got my start doing sexual violence prevention, education, rape crisis counseling, victim advocacy. I myself am a survivor of sexual violence and have diagnosed complex PTSD. And I grew up in Pennsylvania, which up until very recently was a prohibition state. And when I moved to California in 2013, I was able to access medical cannabis for my migraines and my PTSD. And it was the first time that I was able to use cannabis to manage my PTSD symptoms, which included panic attacks, appetite loss, difficulty sleeping, a lot of dissociation from my body and my sensations, and pain with penetration, uh, which was something I experienced most of my adult life. And so when I found Foria, uh, which is a company that makes a THC-infused oil for vulvas, I was able to have penetrative sex without pain for the first time. And that was a game changer for me. And it made pleasure more accessible. My orgasms were different. And I was like, wow, as far as I'm aware, there are not a lot of sexuality educators talking about how to incorporate cannabis into your sex life in a really intentional way. This could be a thing. And so it was. <laughs> you bringing this to the table, I think is so important. I, I do talk with my clients about this is an option. And I think you and I have already kind of talked about this before we started recording that we're not here to evangelize people of the cannabis. <laughs> We're not here to, to ask anybody to do anything they're not comfortable with. And I have seen with my clients, not only with persistent mental health issues like PTSD and anxiety and depression and painful sex issues, them be able to really get some freedom by using cannabis. So talk a little bit about like how you started kind of doing the coaching side and what has that brought to your life and what that what does that bring to your coaching clients? I love coaching so much. Like I have been an educator, like I said, for 11 years and I love speaking in front of a large group. But the cool part about working with clients, you know, one-on-one or with couples is that we really get to deep dive into what's going on for them and what's coming up and like be solutions oriented and really just, I kind of get to be a a cross between like tech support and like a personal trainer and a cheerleader. (laughs) (laughs) Tech support for relationships. Right. Yes. So with cannabis, my first writing gig in the cannabis industry was for a website called Leafly, which is an incredible resource. And that was this was back in 2015 when I was brand new to the industry. And they're like, do you want to write a column for us? And I was like, hell yes. <laughs> and so it started kind of getting the word out about, oh, here's a sex educator talking about cannabis. And so couples started to find me and, and want more specialized help. And a lot of them were like, where do we even start? Most of them lived in California. And so they were like, we, we walk into a dispensary, we feel totally overwhelmed. We don't know where to like, what to do or where to go or which ones, what strains are best is, should we use this or that? And, and so I kind of like, okay, breathe everybody. Let's, let's just start with what's getting in the way. What's getting in the way of pleasure, connection, and intimacy in your life? Is it pain? Is it anxiety? Is it a lack of knowledge of just like basic sexual skills? Like that's something that you don't need cannabis for. Like I can just talk you through that stuff. Like is, and so it's kind of, I use the plicit model. It's this idea that like, it's okay to have struggles and it's okay. And you're not broken and everything's fine. And here's some information and here's some more specifics that we can get into. And if it's like big stuff, then like go see a therapist. That's not my job. It's really cool to kind of dial in. And most of them it's, I'm stressed. I can't turn off my brain at the end of the day. 
I'm really struggling to connect with my partner. You know, typically one partner has more of a sexual interest than the other. So there's some kind of like disconnection with levels of sexual interest. And how do we bridge that gap? So what I usually tell couples, not across the board, because everybody's different and, and that's important too, like that there's no one size fits all for sex and cannabis. It is very specialized, but kind of as a general rule, if you can start to think about creating a container for your sexual experience, whether that means scheduling it and like actually setting aside the time Or, you know, if you happen to be doing it whenever, thinking about picking up clothes off the floor, like kind of creating a space, maybe light some incense or a candle, put on some music, like, like make it an experience so that you can both drop in and you can incorporate cannabis into that sort of ritual of like, okay, we're going to pack a bowl together or somebody's going to use an infused oil for like either genitals specifically or like a massage or, you know, you had a rough day. Let me draw you a bubble bath and like let you soak with a, a bath bomb that's infused and you can just like let your muscles relax. Like there's so many touch points that you can use with cannabis. And so it's, it's kind of giving them options and let's, let's see what might work for you guys. Absolutely. I think you're, you're, you're hitting on something that's really important that I work on with my couples as well. It's okay to switch gears. It's okay to give your body and your mind the very clear message. Hey, we are going to have sex or we are going to relax because I think, especially many of my female identified clients, they talk very much about the list that rolls in their head and how it is very, very difficult for them to disconnect from perfectionism, stress, and that constant need to care for others. That's so real. And especially when those folks are parents, um, as, right? Like ah, ah. the moms that I talk to are some of the most, like, I don't have kids myself. I am, I am child free for life. I am an auntie to like everyone in my life. I just I'm, saw you tweet about that. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah. girl. I'm a mom. And I was like, ah, let's trade girl. Let's trade. Right. Like <laughs> hashtag team, no babies. But like, <laughs> but I have such empathy for my mom friends and they come to me all the time and they're like, I miss my sex life pre babies. Like I can't get out of mom space. And and so I actually had a couple recently, they're not, they weren't even clients. They're just like friends of mine. And, and one of them is a colleague. And I left them a joint of one of my favorite strains that I had on hand for sex. And I was like, just see how this goes. Like, just take a puff each. Like, don't get, go, don't get overboard, but like, see how this goes. And he messaged me later and he's like, we had the best sex <laughs> that we've had in so long. And what she shared with me was, it allowed her that disconnect between like, okay, baby's asleep. They have an 18 month old and they're like, okay, baby's asleep. Like I can take off mom hat and put on sexy wife hat. And like, that feels like a good state change for me. And that allowed me to access my body and not be constantly thinking about like, does she need me? Does it, you know, she's still breastfeeding. So like, you know, my breasts are for food, but they're also sexual. And how do I like work? So the cannabis kind of helped her get into the present. Yeah. And not feel like you need the monitor, the monitor all the time and stare at it. And I think it's important that we mention that there, there's actually some research right now. And luckily because of legalization, the research is coming that women are reporting and people generally, but women are reporting that they're able to have more enjoyable sex. We have the numbers. It's just showing up that (laughs) I think the last one that I saw that the last testing that I saw, was like 40% of the population that they had tested had said, yes, I've actually had more pleasurable sex using cannabis. And, and I do think it is tied to this, not really struggling to put the world away, put away our, our responsibilities. Yes. That's real. And I think one of the the misconceptions that can happen in in the cannabis space and it gets into marketing terms and like this weed will give you orgasms. And it's like, (laughs) let's not get carried away here. Like I don't care what you're smoking or eating or vaping or nothing's going to just spontaneously cause an orgasm. It doesn't work like that. Like arousal is such a complex process. And obviously I know you know this, like there's so many facets to it. Like if you subscribe to the dual control model, this idea of like the gas and the brake pedal, and you have to like take off the brakes before you can hit the gas. And like, I think that's really what cannabis does. Like it does help with hitting the gas. It makes the gas pedal like go faster, but like more importantly, it helps take the brake off. And that's what I find useful. 
And when you've dealt with any kind of mental health issue, especially trauma, it, finding your gas and brakes is really, really difficult. And my clients out there know, and and the pe- my friends, I'm I am an evangelist for mindfulness, and so like I feel like there are some things we can do without cannabis or even medications, but then there are things that are very, very difficult to get past, especially when you're trying to process your trauma, when you're trying to figure out what your triggers are. And I think what you're talking about, like with your clients is, is it echoes all of that. This is not an easy landscape to get through. And cannabis can be for some people an aid. Really what it starts with is masturbation. I am an evangelist for masturbation. I think everyone should be masturbating if, unless they are entirely asexual and like, that's just not of interest to them. And like, in that case, you know, more power to them, but everyone else needs to be masturbating. It's crucial. And especially with cannabis, people all the time are like, what's the best strain for sex? What's the best product? What's the best? I can't answer that for you. What works for me and my body and my situation and my context might be completely off base for you. So the only thing I can tell you is get whatever product you're going to be using, try a little bit and then masturbate. And then like, notice, is your skin more sensitive? Are you like in your head or are you feeling more embodied? Do you just want to take a nap? If it's a nap strain, maybe not a good date night strain. Like... (laughs) We have so much technology. We have so social media is so fast. Everything is so fast in our world that when I'm working with folks in therapy, when we're talking about their sex lives, when we're talking about their relationships, they really want that fix it button. I would love it. I would, you know, I tell them all the time. If I had my, got my Hogwarts letter, you know, I am a true Hufflepuff. Like, let's do this. I would charge more, but you know, (laughs) but we don't have that. And that experimentation is crucial. Quick break from the action, folks. Ah, Action. (laughs) I just want to tell you about my Patreon. Every week, I bring you guests and seriously, lots of sex nerdery. (laughs) Help me keep doing that by becoming a supporter. What do you get in return? Cool perks. For real. I am going to be doing shout outs, stickers, a bunch of stuff. So check it out at ericamiley.com forward slash Patreon. That's E-R-I-K-A-M-I-L-E-Y dot com forward slash Patreon. I hope to see you and see more of you by becoming a Patreon. Thanks, guys. Where should folks begin with their experimentation? Of course, with masturbation, but what's what's maybe a next step for them? With masturbation, first of all, I would say edibles are not your friend. Just like fair? skip right over those. Um, <laughs> I have heard so many horror stories of people like massively overdoing it with edibles. And they're like, well, I don't want to smoke. I don't like to smoke. I I just want to try this, you know, brownie or this thing. I understand why you think edibles are a good idea. They're just not. Like they take up to two hours to kick in. If you go overboard, then you're committed for the next six to eight hours. And like, that's just not ideal for anybody. So where I would tell people to start is if they're brand new to cannabis, try something that's not going to get you high. So that looks like topicals. Like if you have pain, rub some on your shoulder and notice if having reduced pain helps you be more present in your body. Or if you have a headache, you could rub it on your temples or back in your, like wherever it hurts is fine. And if you are in a state that has like euphoria or the like, spray some on your genitals, let it marinate. It, it is really a marinade. It is not a lube. The, the weed lube thing is very much a misnomer. This is, this is a pre-lube. So you have to let it sit for 25 minutes and then start your stimulation and like see how that's different than when you're masturbating without it. And if you're going to go inhalable methods, the, what I would say the cleanest, the most healthy, the best for your body is to vaporize flour. Smoking flour, smoking a joint, smoking a bowl, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but the smoke is irritating and it does have more of an odor. So if you have neighbors, if you have kids, if you have a job that you don't want your clothes to smell like cannabis, like vaping flour is you're getting the whole plant. You're not getting extractions. You're not getting solvents. You're not getting any of that. You're just getting, you know, organic matter and you're vaporizing it. So you're controlling what temperature 
you're applying to the plant, which means you get to control the, the effects a little bit. Because what we found is that not only do the effects vary of like what cannabinoids, you know, THC, CBD, CBN, CBG, like what's in there and the terpenes and how it smells, the, the limonene and the linalool and things like that, but also what temperature you you use to apply to it, different things, they are released at different temperatures. And so you end up like Leafly did a whole article on like, I vaped this flower at this temperature and felt these effects, this temperature and felt these effects, this temperature and felt these effects, which is fascinating that you can even do that. So there's so much like dialing in that you get to do and having a vaporizer allows you to do that. So like my desktop vape is from a company called Vape Exhale. It's expensive. It's like four or 500 bucks, but like it's so cost effective because you're only using, you can't see my hands, but like say an, you know, an inch, not even a half an inch of flour. And that's enough for a session. You only need like a puff or two. And it's just, it's really good. It's really clean. So like I would start with vaping flour. If you can't access that, if all you have is a joint, do that. But like a puff, that's all you need. Just a little, little bit. And then see how it hits you and notice what's going on in your body. You can always add more. You cannot subtract. It's it's impossible. It's like adding salt to to your cooking. Like you can't take it out. So like be mindful of how much you're putting in. I think it was it was on your your website, the canosexual, you had written a blog about like learning how to microdose and learning how to like what is it that your body is going to react to. And what your body is going to do is going to be different than someone else's body. And being this is, I think this is really connected to like coming back to your body. We are so as a culture disconnected from our body. So I think that it's a wonderful, wonderful idea. So when you think about strains and things, this is this is this is tough because not every state, like right, like not, and not every country has access to marijuana the way the way that we will all of hopefully eventually get. But like here in Florida where we are, they are fighting to get flour included in medical access because medical access right now is only vaping you can only vape tincture and I think they do the patches and the lotions and things like that, but flour is not available to medical patients. And I do believe that will change here very quickly because I think, I do believe the the governor has been like, this doesn't make any sense. Why are we, why are we limiting this? This seems, this seems like extra. But when people get started like with vaping and things like that, do you encourage them to go maybe to a medical facility or, or, or maybe even come to someone like you to like figure out like what strains work? Like how does that process work for cl- your clients? I mean, if they're local, if they're in California, if they're in Los Angeles, San Diego area, and they want to pay me to go to the store with them, I will. It costs a lot. But if they're out of state or if they're in a different state, like I'm not going to want to recommend a specific strain or as they're starting to refer to it in, in the cannabis industry, a cultivar, because strain names we're finding vary. Like somebody's like, oh, Blue Dream's great. But the Blue Dream at this dispensary is different than the Blue Dream at that dispensary, which is different than the Blue Dream in this other state, which is like, there's a thing that's happening right now that they gave like 25 different growers the same seed. So the same parent plant and they had them all grow it. And the variance is ridiculous. And it depends on growing conditions. And, you know, did you do hydroponic versus outdoor versus indoor versus like what fertilizers, what kinds of, you know, what's the water in your area? What's the water? Like (laughs) there's such massive variation. So to sidestep all of that, what I tell people to do is if it's sexually related and they're looking for flour, you want less than 15% THC. A lot of the trend in the industry is to go massively high with THC percentages, like 25, 28, 30% THC. That is way too much for sex. Way, 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 way too much. Unless you have an enormously high tolerance, like I do, and like I can dab and then get on stage and give a presentation because like that's sort of a function of my job. But the average person who's brand new, who like a puff is going to send them spinning, 15% or less THC. And then depending on kind of what they're looking for, you can do some research on some of the cannabinoids and some of the terpenes. Like pinene is very like alert, focused, and that's sort of got a piney smell. So actually use your nose. If it's more citrusy, that's going to be limonene. So that's going to be euphoric, but also can be a little intense, like can tend toward anxiety for some folks. So like be mindful of that. 
If it smells really kind of hoppy, that's likely to be myrcene. So that's going to be a little bit heavier and more sedate. It's a lot of trial and error. It's kind of like finding an antidepressant that works for you. Like you got to figure out kind of what your body needs and, and what works well for you. But like the things that smell good to you are actually more likely to, to work well for you. If you smell it and you're like, oh, I don't like that. Put it down. It's not for you. <laughs> that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But like trust your body. And so it, it really does become like body awareness and attunement and, and figuring out what works for you. And I just think that that's, that is a, a wonderful way to really think about this. Like it is all about your own personal biology, what works for you versus, and like you said, or like you said earlier, if you're not comfortable getting high, there are other options here <laughs> and you do not have to get high to enjoy the benefits of cannabis and sexual life. Yeah. People talk, CBD is the one that's kind of getting the heyday right now. Everybody's excited about CBD, but it's not the only thing that you can use with cannabis that doesn't get you high. To get science nerdy for a second, in its raw form, like when you pick a bud off the plant before you apply any heat to it, the THC in it is called THCA. It's the acid form of THC. When you apply heat to it, that's called decarboxylating, and that turns it into delta-9 THC, which is the stuff that gets you high. But THCA is actually really good for you in its raw form. And so there are companies in California that make tinctures that are THCA tinctures that will give you the body benefits of THC without the high. And so like knowing that that's even out there, most people are like, what do you mean THCA? No, like, like it's a thing, it's a thing. And then there's also like Delta 8 THC is a, a new up and coming thing that also doesn't get you high in the same way that Delta 9 does. And so you get to kind of be like, Mr. Chemistry or Ms. Chem yeah. MX Chemistry, like, yes. right? I have to say, like, I every this is probably the bum rap that people who use marijuana get. Like, oh, they're just these lazy, you know, in the couch folks. I, I tell you, every person that I know personally and that I've interacted with that are in the science of it, they are some of the nerdiest people I know. <laughs> oh yeah. Every stoner is a little junior MacGyver and like can figure out how to turn anything into a device to consume cannabis. Like they are some of the most ingenious, like yes. Yes. <laughs> resourceful <laughs> folks and nerdy. We're so fucking nerdy. Like yes. we want to be efficient. <laughs> Get it done. So how do people find you in the world and what's new? What's going on? Who are you talking with soon? Like tell me all the things. Okay, so you can find me in the world on my website, which is www.canasexual.com. <laughs> and you can find me on Instagram at canasexual, Twitter at Ashley Manta. I just announced a couple of really exciting partnerships. Uh, like I said, I do work with Foria. And so they're fantastic. They do have a CBD from hemp oil on their website, and they have a few products that are CBD, so they can be shipped to all 50 states. And if you use coupon code CANASEX, that's C-A-N-N-A-S-E-X, you will save 10%. I also just announced that I am Slickwid's new lube evangelist, because I love me some Slickwid. It's an amazing, not infused, it's just a regular lube, but it's, it's vegan, gluten-free, not tested on animals, it's body safe, it's free of irritating chemicals. And you can also save 10% on their website with coupon code CANASEX. And then I'm also working with Sibian, which is like this legendary sex toy that you can ride. And then like, it's like riding a Harley for pleasure. That's um, exciting. It's so good. <laughs> They're sending me to the sex expo in New York city in September. And then I'm also speaking at the end of April in San Francisco at the new living expo about sex and cannabis. I'm going to be giving out for you samples. Marianne Williamson is speaking. Like it's a very conscious living kind of focused expo and they're really interested in bringing cannabis into the conversation. So I'm excited to kind of bridge that gap for them. That's so exciting. Yay. I'm so excited for you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here and you can always come back and Thank you folks for listening and getting to the end of the episode. I promise everything will be in the show notes so that you can easily find Ashley and all the fun and wonderful things she's doing. Thank you again, everyone. Have a wonderful week and we will see you next time. Bye. Thanks for listening, folks. Please rate and review on iTunes. That helps this podcast get found. If you leave a five-star review, let me know about it on any social media and I'll shout you out on the podcast. 
You can find my website at ericamiley.com. You can find me on Facebook, the gram, and Twitter. See y'all next time.